Welcome to the first module of our Corn Uses lesson. What do all these things have in common? Corn is the bond that ties them together. Over the course of this module, you will learn why. Most people don't realize the variety of products to which corn contributes. Truly there is no other crop as versatile as corn. In addition to the food and animal feed that people typically think of it providing, it also is part of a surprising number of other products. In this lesson we will cover the following main topics, types of corn, kernel components, and the primary uses of corn. We will start with corn grain types. Corn kernels, which are the seeds of the corn plant, can vary greatly in color and composition. To create unique products, different corn grain types can be used. However, as you will see, it is usually just one main type of corn that is used in most products. Corn type is determined by the kernel, or the seed. Kernels can have different colors and shapes. They also can have different compositions with various amounts and types of starch, as well as differing levels of protein and oil. These are the main types of corn. Some are not economically important for us today, but they have interesting features and were important in corn's history. We will briefly discuss each type of corn. Here's what it might look like if the different corn types were sliced in half to show their inside composition. Their kernels have different amounts of soft and hard starch. Soft starch is composed of mostly amylopectin, a starch with a chemical structure that is branching and molecules that are loosely packed. Hard starch is composed of mostly amylose, a starch with a chemical structure that is linear allowing the molecules to become densely packed. One interesting thing about these two types of starch is that hard starch is more insect resistant compared to soft starch. Sweet corn, unlike the other corns, has high amounts of sugar in its kernel. And of course, all corn types have a germ, which is the living portion of the seed, or the embryo. The center of flint corn is soft starch, and it has a hard starch layer that encloses the grain. This protects the kernel and allows for longer term storage. Flint corn can come in many colors, including blue, green, red, yellow, and white, and all these colors can occur within a single cob. Flint corn has little economic importance in the U.S., other than as an ornamental, and is sometimes called Indian or calico corn. Native Americans grew this type in northern regions before Europeans arrived. Here are some of the wide variety of colors of flint corn. Purple, blue, green, red, yellow, and black kernels are shown. Cobs can have a single color of kernels or multiple colors. Everyone is probably familiar with popcorn and maybe there's some in your cupboard at home right now. Popcorn is a type of flint corn. It is composed of mostly hard starch with a small center of soft starch. The kernels in the ears are smaller than other types of corn, and the plants themselves are smaller too. There are two main types, pearl, which has a rounded kernel shape, and rice, where the kernels are pointed. See the kernels in this picture? They're pointed. Popcorn can be white, yellow, red, blue, or black. Popcorn is only used for food. It has no industrial or feed applications and is only a small part of the corn grown. So how do these popcorn kernels get transformed into this tasty treat? Heat is required. 
Two things are necessary in addition to heat, an intact kernel and the correct grain moisture, ideally at 13.5% moisture. When popcorn kernels are heated, moisture inside the kernel turns to steam. The hard starch and seed coat keep the moisture inside the kernel until the pressure intensifies. Eventually, the kernel explodes, breaking open the kernel, while the soft starch in the kernel center expands to help produce the flake, which is the white part of the popped corn. Actually, other types of corn besides popcorn may have the ability to pop, but not as well as popcorn, and they won't have the same volume. There are two main kernel colors, white and yellow. The kernels in this photo are yellow as evidenced by the seed coat remnants. Incidentally, this is what gets stuck in your teeth after eating popcorn. However, it does contain fiber and nutrients, so it's not all bad. The shape into which the kernel pops is called the flake. Mushroom and butterfly are the names of the flake types. Flower corn is probably a type you are not familiar with, but it is likely you have consumed it at some point. This corn is composed of almost all soft starch, which makes it easier to grind. Some flower corn is grown in the southwest United States and in Latin America. It's used in tortilla chips and other products. This next corn has a very unique appearance. You will notice that this corn appears to be much different from other corn. A genetic mutation causes each kernel to be enclosed in a husk. It is not commercially grown. Native Americans used pod corn in religious rituals prior to Columbus. It was once considered to be a potential ancestor of modern corn, but it's not. Many people feel that our next corn, sweet corn or corn on the cob, is one of their favorite things about summer. Sweet corn is different than other corn types because it has a higher sugar content. Also, sweet corn is used as a vegetable, not as a grain like the other corn types. Fresh sweet corn is a treat most Americans are familiar with and its popularity is increasing in the rest of the world. Here is some sweet corn after harvest that is ready to be taken home for cooking and eating. Another difference between sweet corn and other corn is the way it's harvested. Sweet corn is harvested while it's immature. Also, the whole ear is harvested, while grain corn is combined so that kernels are off of the cob. See the corn production lesson for more information on combining. Someday, as you're driving through the countryside, you might see some corn growing in a field and think, mmm, sure wish I had some of that corn to eat. Chances are that corn is the final corn type we'll be discussing. It's dent corn, and it wouldn't be as tasty to you as sweet corn. Here is a comparison of sweet corn and dent corn, the most commonly grown corn. They are used and harvested differently from each other, and most of dent corn is not used for food for people. We will discuss dent corn in more detail in the next section. We will now discuss the most economically important type of corn, dent. Dent corn is the most widely grown type of corn. 
It is composed of mostly soft starch surrounded by hard starch. Unlike other corn types, there is a depression or dent at the top of the kernel which is formed when it dries and the soft starch shrivels. Dent corn is usually yellow. However, there also are white dent corns. It doesn't have beta carotene and is used for corn flakes, tortilla flour, and cornmeal. Dent corn can be further broken down by grade. The grade of corn is based on its quality. Grade is indicated by a number ranging from 1 to 5. The lower the number, the better the grade, and the higher the price. Grades are based on test weight, density, broken or damaged kernels, and foreign material. Broken and damaged kernels are particularly bad for corn that will be used for food products. There are three classes of corn, yellow, white, or mixed. White corn tends to be lower yielding compared to yellow. When prices for corn are given in the news, they are usually based on number two yellow dent. It is the most widely marketed grade in class. Corn is marketed by bushel weight. One bushel of corn weighs 56 pounds. So how does a seemingly simple kernel of corn get made into all these complex products we discussed in the beginning of this module? The corn kernel has various components that can be used for different purposes. Before we get into the products that are produced from corn, let's first look at the composition of dent corn in our next topic. There are three main components of the kernel. Bran, endosperm, and germ. Different types of corn vary in their specific composition of these components. However, we will focus on dent corn as it is the most commonly used type. Pictured is the outside of a dent corn kernel. In addition to the three main components, there's this little piece at the bottom called a tip cap. It's 1% of the total kernel and not economically significant The bran is the outside of the kernel, not including the tip cap. The bran is about 5% of the kernel's weight. It consists of the pericarp and the inner seed coat. The pericarp is the yellow part that you can see. It protects the seed. The bran provides fiber and other nutrients. Let's look at a cross section of the corn kernel to see what's inside. Imagine we sliced our original corn kernel in half going the long way. Here is the cross section that shows the inside of the kernel where the endosperm and germ are. The endosperm, the highlighted portion of this diagram, consists of starch and protein that provide energy for the germinating seed. Most of the kernel is endosperm. It is used in the widest variety of products so it is the most economically important part of the kernel. Remember back to the beginning of this lesson? We discussed how corn types are classified by their starch types. The endosperm of dent corn consists of both hard and soft starch. The germ the highlighted portion of this diagram, is the living part of the kernel. It is the seed embryo, which is the genetic material for the baby corn plant, and consists mostly of oil and protein. About 12% of the kernel is germ. 25% of germ is oil, which is the most economically important component of the germ. In addition to oil and protein, the germ contains vitamins and minerals.
When we examine the corn kernel as a whole, we can see the total composition of starch, protein, fiber, oil, and sugar. Starch composes the majority of the kernel, followed by protein and fiber. We have now covered the first two sections of our lesson. This is the end of part one of our two-part lesson on corn uses. To continue the lesson, please start the corn uses part two module where we learn about the primary uses of corn.